Hey, I'm Ryan Johnson, and this is the Lady Death Knuckle Knife. So this is a project that's been near and dear to my heart for over a year. Um, projects take a long time to, to, to go from drawing to uh, completion, and this has been a fun one. So I've uh, last few years I've really gotten interested in trench warfare, World War One, some of World War Two, but knuckle knives play a big role in that history. Um, you see knuckle knives being used a lot in World War One. You see a resurgence of them in World War Two, and when I look at knuckle knives, the knuckle knives I've handled, the number one thing that I've not liked about them one was uh, a handle that's just too small for someone like me to use. But then also, the blade always seems out of proportion to the knife. Um, and so when I talked about doing a knuckle knife, I wanted to do something that, that was as aesthetically pleasing as it was deadly, right? Um, and so we came up with a Lady Death. Um, it's also just one of those projects where when you pick it up, the first thing you say to yourself is, oh shit, this is, this is something. You know, so this knife is a big knife, and in the proportions are are like what I like. Uh, to is what's pleasing to me. The handle is based basically the battle skank knucks. If you've seen those coming out of Gold Point, that's the same profile, and uh, the profile is meant. Uh, the points are distributed in such a way that I can I can hit with this in a lot of different angles, and and be okay, including a hammer blow angle down here at the bottom. So I can hammer blow with this, I can punch with it, I can rake with it, and of course I can stab with it. And this is primarily a stabbing type knife, right? But it's got enough blade length where you can really get uh, some penetration. This can also be held as a saber grip. If you notice the, the angle of this down here allows me to shift my grip and actually put my thumb on that thumb ramp, this rides up against my palm and I can slice, right? Not exactly how I would use it. I would go ahead and grip it and rip it. Just, you can slice this way, but slicing is not really where you're at with something like this. This is a, this is a brawling and stabbing type weapon. The sheath is, uh, is pretty amazing. Chattanooga Leatherworks really knocked it out of the park with this. This is a sheath I designed and they made. Um, this sheath has an inset of canvas as a throwback to World War I. Um, the overall sheath design is based on the old Randall sheaths. Um, I just think that it's hard to beat the old Randall style designs. So you'll see a lot of Randall influence with this, including the, the little holes along the top that you can uh, lash with paracord and things like that. The belt uh, loop is removable, and we have uh, house-made titanium screw sets uh, to, to be able to remove that, and you could put on your own adapters or whatever. Uh, the back of the sheath is our standard uh, split belt loop, so you can run this on Molly Pals webbing. Uh, you can run it on a belt. This can also be rotated um, 180 degrees, and you can run it upside down. Um, and if you're going to run it upside down, though, definitely lash this bad boy. The screw sets in the handles are also house designed and house made on our Swiss screw machine. And they're titanium. All the titanium's anodized. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing package. Um, is, it, is it something that uh, your modern warfighter is necessarily going to be his go-to to strap on his kit? Not necessarily. Uh, because they've got to be very weight conscious and size conscious. That's why the Raider Dagger is the size it is. Is this something that I would definitely grab if, it, if, the, if the world were ending? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I was going to be in a melee, this is a go-to right here. Anyway, I hope you love it as much as I do, because this is definitely part of the RMJ lineup family now.